I think it's already eight on the dots now. Yeah, okay. It's good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Tayola in Capito, and I'm your host for today. And the topic for today's webinar is bioinformatics and the relevance to the science. Ah, please bring to my last Today we are going to learn about the um, significance of computational methods in analytic, analyzing data, improving drug So before we begin, um, a quick rundown on the uh, history of the club and the aims and values of the club. So before I begin. The uh, webinar we are doing now is all about Cycone and is a science club created for students to experience their and satisfy their scientific curiosity, develop their scientific knowledge, and pursue their interest in scientific activities. Then the goals of the club is to organize seminars, workshops, then pursue, uh, pursue their um, interest in school outreach career opportunities. Mentorships is available to in Cycone and trust us to trust God and we trust everyone around us to, to build this club to a greater height and all. So we provide opportunity for like-minded people to join to our membership and volunteering and it's not necessary for be from life science alone but it's majorly for life science students and graduates and undergraduate and postgraduate and so not many people and i am um, i'm using this opportunity to tell you that we are um, searching for volunteers for the club so if you are interested you can i uh, message me or message the admin in charge so regarding that we'll wait for the speaker to come so that you can read out his bow and we begin as soon as possible. Shall we the speaker there? Yes, the speaker has joined. Sir, good evening, sir. Hello, good evening. Yes, sir, good evening, sir. So before you begin, sir, I'll do a rundown on your bow. Okay. Right. Okay. So the name of the um, our speaker today is let me go through his name. Okay. Okay, the name of our speaker today is Mr. Christopher B. Olowosoke. Did I get it right? Olowosoke. Okay, Olowosoke. Yeah, that's the name of our speaker that will be taking us today. So I'll read this bow for us night now. So. I am is a young, soul driven graduate of biotechnology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think about developing novel solutions for metabolic yeah. diffusion and efficiency to research involving theoretical computation and, and experimental approaches from the past biomarker. Furthermore, Africa is motivated to contribute its quota for advancement via societal membership, exploration, and collaborations that will maximize the skills and push SDGs away while building a career in nutrogenetics and genomics from a top ranked institute that can provide the modern biology tools for in innovative intervention. Our speaker currently is the founder of BCREES Academic Consults an associate at the Institute of Bioinformatics and Molecular Therapeutics, IBMT, Computer Aided Therapeutic Discovery and Design, CATDD. So, with that, I want us to give a round of applause via our, my, our, our income messages to our speaker as he begins the webinar for us today. So, thank you very much. You are welcome, sir. Thanks so much for a short introduction. I believe we can all hear me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm um, good evening, everyone. Um, happy weekend from wherever, from wherever you are joining us. 
Good morning, good evening. Good, good evening, sir. So my name is um my name is Christopher Busai Oluchoke. I'm the founder of Big Chris Academic Consult, and I'm also an associate of IBMT, that is Institute of Bioinformatics and Molecular Therapeutics. I'm also a, fel a fellow of CAT, that is Computer Aided Therapeutics Design and Development. So today I'm honored to be called by the Science Con community as a club to present on the topic by informatics and its relevance in biomedical science. So before I proceed, uh, I want to ask a question. So the host said, this is a club for early career scientists, if I could hear her right, and a club for researchers, like professors, scholars. So this is not a club, I believe this is not a club that is going to be restricted to just webinars. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Very correct. Okay, that, that means yes, there are going to be opportunities of research collaborations and all that. So yes, I just want to make this note that I'm a collaborator, I'm open to collaboration. So if after the presentation, after the short talk, you feel like you want to reach me, you can easily reach me on my LinkedIn. Uh, profile that is Christopher B. Oluwoshoke. You can reach me on Facebook and you can also reach me on Twitter. So, not to waste our time today, I'm going to just go straight to what we have on ground. And the topic says, like I said before, bioinformatics and its relevance in biomedical research. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So for, the, for this class or for this talk, we are going to be going through this outline and from the beginning I have the bioinformatics and biomedical research, information of bioinformatics and biomedical research. Going to that, we are going to go to milestone of bioinformatics, that is histories, discoveries in bioinformatics that lead up to what we are going to do in the field of bioinformatics. Then we go to the goal of bioinformatics. There are several goals in which bioinformatics is established. So we have to have insight, understanding of some of this goal. So from there, we go to, into the importance and challenges facing by informatics to biomedical research. So what we are going to be doing today is strictly going to be streamlined to just the So from there, we go to relevant skill that you need, skill that we all need to recall a bioinformatician because at the end of the day, if you don't hold this key or if you are not trained or an expert or having experience in informatician so there are some skills that are needed from wherever field you are coming from either life science the host said that pure science uh, maricultural science just name it engineering field these skills are required for you to be called a bioinformatician at, at the end of the day so at the end of this session, I want to believe that we are going to be able to achieve this objective. But we just have three main objectives for this session. So the first objective on my timeline here is to promote research enthusiasm in young and early career scientists in the field of science. And like I said, not just life science. It could be pure science, it could be agriculture, it could be engineering. As a biotechnologist, eh? And I was an undergraduate, I was opportune to work in diverse field. So those knowledge from those diverse field are applicable in bioinformatics. So that is one of the objectives of this session. You should be able and be willing to promote enthusiasm in young researchers. So the second objective of this session would be to encourage multidisciplinary research attitude for effective research communication and progress. You know, if I am about technology and I'm not a boy by informatician, I'm not able to interact, relate with other people from uh, people from other field. It's not going to like speak well of me as a researcher because there might be stages I need data or information or biological data from other field. For instance, let me say microbiology now. I might decide I want to streamline my bioinformatics knowledge into field in microorganism. So I must be able to relate with a microbiologist. 
let's say I want to work with the biochemistry, I must be able to relate into fields that have to do with macromolecules. So those fields are relevant. So we are trying to encourage a multidisciplinary attitude, research attitude, for young and early career scientists, like I've said. And so the third objective of this session will be to create awareness on the need to integrate newer technologies. We get to the advancements of team now, people are migrating to the use of sophisticated technology like chat GPT, for instance. These are some of the work in which bioinformatics is, being re is relevant. So if you are a scientist of this era, of this 21st century, and you are not able to integrate new technology to whatever you are doing at any level of your career, you might be unable to move at the pace in which others are moving. So in this session, we are going to try as much as possible to be able to create or give you the awareness of the need to integrate newer technology like AI machine learning in our everyday research practice. I hope you can all hear me this. Yes, sir. We can, yes, yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Now, this is our objective. Now, after in, uh, just to begin with for our bioinformatics and biomedical research, I want to believe that many of us know that the field of bioinformatics does just, just not, uh, not happen like that. It all begins like a very long time ago. And then that was before the genetic blueprint, uh, blueprint of life was discovered. We like to say, we like to think. So during this period, there were no solid link that was showing that our biomolecules uh, or macromolecules are connecting to each other. So for simple and complex biological traits to be studied, those people, certain processes, certain breeding processes, preservation processes, and conservation processes are practiced. So for you to understand organism, these practices take limitations, limitations that are restricted to just observation and inference development to what we can only see. So we don't know what is happening at the molecular level. So, for instance, now, let's say organism that we don't know at this period, at this era, this organism, we don't know anything about them. The amount of energy, the amount of work, resources it takes for us to understand those organisms or those process, biological process, they are traits, pathology, genetics that is embedded in this organism. It's always come with a lot of curiosity and guesses before nucleic acid was discovered. So some of these experiments that are being used in those days are what I've just said again. And the first person that started this technology, this traditional technology was great Greg Mendel, where he used, I believe you all know who Greg Mendel is. We are all yes, sir. So yes, sir. they used pea plants to study heritage, genetic transfer of information. So from his study, he was able to establish laws. These laws are some of the basis of what we are building on today that is relevant to the field of bioinformatics. So from this law, we have the law of segregation, independent assortment, law of dominance, and all that. Following this discovery by recommended, Frederick Michel went to discover nuclein. But at this period, nuclein wasn't exactly the the components that they know that is transferring the biological information. So it was just an isolation from white blood cells. So they didn't really know or get in-depth understanding of what looking is, but they were able to understand that this, uh, this component is what is harboring the genetic information of every living organism, be it organic organism, be it human, be it plants. So at this period, they were just able to identify that there is something that is outboring the genetic material. So that was what the work of um, Frederick Misha was. So following this uh, advancement in technology, every and McLean and McLeod, they were able to also conduct experiments that was able to use microorganism to study how genetic information is being transferred. 
Now, if we listen very carefully at the beginning of my introduction, I said there is no feed that is irrelevant before you can become a bioinformatician. So every feed have the uh, work they have done or what they have contributed to this field of mathematics. So from everything I've said, I've talked about the biochemist, I've talked about the microbiologist, and I've talked about the mathematician. Are you following? Yes, sir. So I've talked about the mathematician. So during this, during this um, era, we were able to also understand that mystery that is connecting biological information were also unfold when Ashi Chase was able to perform an experiment using uh, radioactive bacteria in the year 1952. So all these informations are what contributed to the success of bioinformatics today until in the year 1953 where James Watson and Francis Crick and Rosalind Franklin, they were able to understand the structure, the shape of the nucleic acid itself. Don't forget, someone first discovered nucleus. Are you with me? Someone discovered nucleus, which is the genetic basic of life. Yes, I was. They don't have to get information on this nucleus. But then in the year 1953, it all started in the 19th century up to the 20th century. James Watson and Francis Crick, they were able to discover the shape, the composition of nucleic acid, not just the DNA. The RNA, what it looked like from the work of us, uh, and Franklin, we guess now. So in this process, they were able to understand that this information is what trapping what we know today as the advancement in central dogma of molecular biology. Now, this technology or this discovery led to information about central dogma. From this um, point, we were able to know the DNA, the information of what the DNA carries. From this point, we are able to know what RNA is. From this point, we are able to know what protein is. So from this period, different intermediate cycle that is between the central dogma of uh, molecular biology was understood, like the post-translational modification and the post-transcriptional modification. So within this period, enormous biological information are gathered, or they are being gathered. But then as this technology is advancing, we discover that this information is being what enormous, mm -hmm. and our normal method, way of conserving, way of preserving, a way of transforming information, those periods are not as much as effective as the way the biological data have been generated. This period, you get me. So, this is where bioinformatics coming. Now, bioinformatics, we all know that bioinformatics is the field. An imagine field in biotechnology that is the art of the modern biological research of today. So this feed, from what I have on my slide, it's a multidisciplinary feed that combines um, biology, computational science, and statistics. And this was won by um, Pauline and Ben in the year 1980. So these two people were able to come together and discover that, oh, at the pace at which you are generating biological data, either nucleic acid, either RNA, either protein, we are not going to be able to store them, able to conserve them in a place. So we need, we need an expertise. We need a technology that is going to help us to explore this enormous biological data that are being generated at this period. That is when bioinformatics was being developed or coined as a field. So. Because it's a field, it's able to combine biological knowledge, computer science knowledge, statistic knowledge. You can see that these are three fields, but then it is not limited to these three fields alone. Now, using bioinformatics, we are able to understand or analyze, interpret larger or large biological data sets, like nucleic acid, protein, and lipid, etc. So that is where bioinformatics starts gaining ground. Bioinformatics start gaining down. So with bioinformatics, we're able to come up with tools, methods to understand those simple and complex biological systems that were unable to be understood during the period of Kerrigomende. Because I said they were just certain breathing techniques or breathing method that they used those periods to understand biological information, traits, relevant traits 
in either micro, uh, microorganism or plants at those periods. So their work was limited. They just have to breed before they can come up with hypothesis or they can come up with, with a lot of fat, those periods. But now, with bioinformatics, we're able to conduct processes that are complex in research of today. So what is biomedical research? Biomedical research is a field that aims to study human health and disease with the aim of developing new treatment therapies and diagnosis tools to improve human health. And as of today, this combination of process, that is diagnosis, therapy, and treatment is being referred to as diagnostic. So in biomedical research, other knowledge from fields like biochemistry, biology, chemistry, genetics, pharmacology, and physics are also relevant. So if you are coming into the field of bioinformatics and applying it in biomedical research, you have to understand the basics of some of these fields that I've been able to mention. So going to the next thing is the milestone. Milestone of bioinformatics. Now, why previous work have been done during the traditional era, that is the period of recommended. The milestone that led to the development of coding of informatics started, really started in the year 1960. That was when Margaret Dayoff was able to develop method for comparing protein sequence. Now, let's say she was conducting analysis in a lab, research in a lab, and she's working with uh, protein sequence. DNA sequence. So as she's generating the sequence, in terms of finding out this uh, those protein sequence in the place. So she wants to conduct an anti-compare. compare. How this is up with this protein sequence. That is the basis of mathematics. Like I said, a few that biomedical science that so just in the ability to use a computer, which is coming from computer science field, to conduct sequence alignment that is based on algorithm using statistical model. So that is how bioinformatics come to play in the year 1960. By the time it is the year 1970, DNA sequencing technique technology begin to unfold. And then one of the technology, the first generation technology of sequencing that come up was Sanger sequence. I hope we all know what Sanger sequence is. Is everybody? Yes, I'm an idea, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. You know what Sanger sequence, Sanger sequence is? Some people call it intermission method. So in this uh, period, sequencing technology was used to generate large amount of sequence data. So like I said, the amount of data that were generated at those periods before then were little. But then using Sanger sequence, you are just able to what, get the nucleotide arrangement of, let's say, a nucleic acid or a protein at this period, just a short fragment. So there are still limitations at this period. So this period, the unfolding of those sequencing technology we are coming up. So we can understand how nucleic acid are arranged in a genetic uh, sequence. So at this period, sequence begins to unfold. And when sequence unfold, new sequence alignments were able to be carried out, where they use cluster W modules to conduct sequence alignment. Now, by the year 1980, these two people, Colin and Andrea, were able to coin the word bioinformatics, because both of them, one is a computer, uh, computer scientists, and the other one is about uh, biologists. So two of them came together to coin the world by informatics. That is biology, biology and data information. So they coined this term in an international conference in Netherlands in the year 1987. They were able to come up with this title. So why we are doing all these things? Why we not come up with a befitting word that is going to describe the technology we are doing? Because they are coming from different fields, diverse field. So they cannot just start or keep using their own uh, the the name of their field. So they have to come up with this uh, name. That is where bioinformatics begin to unfold. 
So the next information here is in the year 1990, yes. In the 90s, human genome project began to unfold new genetic information, new sequence. And in this period, we were able to gather more information, more biological data that are relevant today in bioinformatics. Bio and in this period, genome assembly, annotation and analysis that were used with software or algorithm like FASTA and BLAST have been developed. So with genome, human genome project, new biological data are unveiled, and then it is not limited to human. Are you getting me? So by the time it is year 2000, that is, I think in the year 2003 or so, because it took 13 years, the complete human genome was was, was conducted and lead to advanced genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, transcriptomics, and system biology that we are using today. So why genetics started long period ago in the era of recommended? Genomics, proteomics, and the omics technology begin after the human genome project was completed. So this field are coming up, are coming up as new technology are being developed. They are coming up. By the year 2010, the research in metagenomics and epigenomics, personalized medicine, have been explored with bioinformatics. At this period, they are sophisticated computers. You get. They are, we are not just restricted to analog and digital computer this period. So they are much more computer that are sophisticated for us to explore analysis like metagenomics and epigenomics at this period. So next generation sequencing is being developed. And some of the this uh, next generation sequencing is the Inumina nanopore sequencing technology. Like I said, during the Sangha period, just a short or small fragment of genetic information or sequence have been able to understood at this period. But then by the time it is 2010, 2012, the NGS, as the next generation sequencing have been explored to get information of larger sequences. So as this is advancing, new technology is also unfolding, but technology and bioinformatics is also becoming much more relevant. Big data analysis are been uh, are being explored, but then as this is unfolding, challenges and other opportunities are also unfolding with bioinformatics. So from 2020 to date, if you look at the trend of things now, you are going to discover that technologies like AI are being explored to research that are relevant to biomedical research. You get now. So for instance, let's say machine learning. In this era, we don't need to conduct wet lab analysis before we can understand how a biological data or biological information is being transformed or transferred or expressed in a system. So with AI, machine learning, artificial intelligence, data, data visualization, we're able to understand new discoveries that are relevant, innovation, development of work that are relevant for biomedical research. So going forward, we come to the goal of bioinformatics. Now, during all this era, there are three goals or three aims at which bioinformatics is being able to address. And the first thing is to able to stop biological data. Now, as biological, biological data has been are needed to be stored, if they are not stored, they are going to be lost. So. Bioinformatics come in place to help us to develop algorithms, develop um, uh, software that will help us to store this biological data in format that are relevant. Like for instance, that we have faster formats, we have faster key formats, we have SDF formats, we have several formats that are unique to the kind of biological data we are saving. Now, the next aim of bioinformatics is to help us organize. Now, when we've stored all this biological information, the data, we have to put them in a place. And that place, they call it database. So we have different types of database. We have the primary database, like the NCBI. We have the DDGB. Uh, we have the NA database. So this database is relevant for us to keep information, organize them so they don't become lost at the end of the day. So you can easily go to this database, pick whatever data you need you need and use them for any analysis that you want to conduct. 
Now, the third aim of bioinformatics is to analyze data sets. Now, you have diverse amount of data online, mm -hmm. biological data, either RNA, DNA, protein, all that, lipid, carbohydrates, everything is online. And they're not just for organism alone. We have for plants, we have for virus, we have for microorganism, we have for human. So all these data are available in database. So let's say you now want to conduct analysis. But Formatis is able to come up with software that are relevant to conduct analysis that are relevant and that are peculiar to organisms. For instance, now there is a database that they call um, that is unique to plants. There's a database that is unique to virus. If you enter or you want to explore NCBI, for instance, because NCBI is a very large repository, so you have diverse um, dialogical data there. So you can easily navigate NCBI, pick information you want to use, and then you use it to conduct analysis using softwares. We have different software. Even some of these softwares are incorporated with this database, while some of them are built so you can always download them and use them on your system. So some are integrated with data, uh, some are integrated with database, some you need to require you to download them. So these databases, uh, these softwares are diverse. So that is the theory aim of bioinformatics. So with bioinformatics, or uh, with these aims, we are able to identify pattern relationship within biological data set processes. Let's take for instance, a gene is coding for the protein. But then there is a malfunction in the protein that is going to alter the normal biological process of this protein. If it will require you long time or long period for you to use wet lab to get this, uh, this malfunction in this protein, with bioinformatics, you can easily, easily navigate or pick already established data on that organism you are interested in, on that plant you are interested in, on that human you are interested in, online, on SCBI, primary databases, secondary database, you pick them, you use bioinformatics to analyze those malfunctions. So you don't need to start doing wet lab. You don't need to start getting to the lab, buying uh, reagents, buying all that before you know those malfunction that is leading to a de disease development in a protein, RNA, or DNA. So with this, if you're able to get this malfunction, you can easily now use approach, diagnostic approach, to develop treatment plan, to develop diagnostic plan for that kind of malfunction in that, uh, that is relevant to that data that you have picked. So with bioinformatics, you can easily do this. So it doesn't require you to take years, unlike the traditional method, before you can even uh, in the days, in those days, it can take you uh, 24 hours. It can take you 24 hours. It can take you months. It can take you days to get the biological process that is resulting to a disease. But now, within the twinkle of an eye, in your house, in your room, you don't even need to enter a lab. You can get those information, those things that are wrong with those uh, biological data, those protein, those DNA in your room. So, this is what bioinformatics has been able to help us. Now, this is a figure that is showing the relationship of bioinformatics to other fields. In my introduction, I have bioinformatics related to just computer science, biology, or bio, biostatistics. And this field is able to combine statistical methods, principle with the, within the field of biology and biomedical research. And this is involving statistical, statistical techniques to study and analyze, interpret data. Also, with biostatistics, we can easily do this. Now, we have computational biology. This is where people are today. They are using computational biology to combine principles using computer, mathematics, and statistics to understand or solve biological uh, problem. And this involves you building algorithm, model, using tools, softwares to analyze biological data, simulate biological process, process that are simple, process that are complex. So with computational mm -hmm. biology, you can easily do this within the thing of an eye. 
The next um, information on this uh, chart is the data science. Now, data science is a field that helps us extract knowledge inside from large data sets. So if you're having a large data, you can easily navigate through the data set with data science, you get. So we also have statistic, we have biology, we have computer uh, uh, about statistic, we have computer science. So everything together is what is coming out to give us bioinformatics. So we also have a second diagram that is showing us areas of bio, bioinformatics application. Bioinformatics is applied in phylogenetic analysis. For instance, you want to know the genetic relatedness of two organisms, even organisms that are not within the same uh, genus, PC, you get now. So you want to know the, uh, what is making them related, what is making them close. So you can easily do this with bioinformatics. We have protein secondary structure prediction. We have protein 3D prediction. We have the model validation and evaluation. We have the pharmacogenomics. We have the drug development and discovery. We have the sequence analysis and all that. So these are areas in which bioinformatics have been applied to today or to in, the, in today technology. Now, the next thing I have in my space here is bioinformatics subfield. And we have two subfields. We have the computational bioinformatics and we have the application bioinformatics. Now, like I said, from the aim, bioinformatics help us to store, to help us to organize, and help us to analyze. So if you look at this subfield, you can see that those three aims that I previously mentioned are being captured in these two subfields. Now, in the computational bioinformatics subfield, we have algorithm and software development. This is where computer scientists come into play, mathematicians, statisticians come to play to develop algorithms that are relevant for us to conduct analysis in the lab or in, your, in the comfort of your house. So, in computational bioinformatics, you are able to um, build software, develop algorithms that are relevant to whatever uh, biological um, analysis you want to do. Now, the next thing in computational bioinformatics is the database construction and creation. Now, let's say you've conducted your sequencing in the lab and you want to keep it so that every other person can use it, maybe now or in the future. That is why database construction is relevant, is needed. And this is a field where computational bioinformatics is made known. Now, for database construction, any information generated in the lab must be stored in a database so that you can easily retrieve it in future. So without a database, it's like you are just conducting your analysis and scientists all over the world will not be able to use those biological information, those biological data that you have done at the comfort of your house. So people can easily just pick those data that you have deposited in those databases like NCBI and conduct whatever analysis they want to conduct. So this is also a field in which computer scientists but statistician, statistician, data scientists are relevant. So they help to develop database, create database. So the next thing is application by informatics. Now in application by informatics, we have three categories, sequencing analysis, function analysis, and structural analysis. So for sequence, you are able to know the arrangement of sequence easily. And then you can use database that have been developed by a computational bioinformatician. So for sequence analysis. Now you have a sequence, you don't know the function. So in the lab, in the biochemistry lab, let's say you want to study the function, you are now going to be using animal model, plant model, uh, rat model, and all those models, which will require you to start feeding the rats. For instance, let's say you are using a rat, you feed them, you are going to shelter them, you are going to clean their waste so they won't have they won't spoil that environment you are using. But then with application by informatics, you can conduct those functional analysis using your software. Are you with me? Is everybody with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So using uh, yes, by informatics, functional analysis, functional analysis like expression, like how gene is interpreted, uh, how gene is being expressed, how protein is being expressed. So. 
With function analysis, you can conduct this in the comfort of your house or in your room. Now, in structural analysis, let's say we have different structure for or shape for nucleic acid or protein. For instance, you can just go to database, get the primary sequence of amino acid that is going to eventually, we are going to use to develop the 3D or 2D structural information of your protein. That is, you just pick your amino acid sequence. When you pick this sequence, you just carry it, you use it and uh, put it in your software, in your database, whatever database you are doing, you can use it to predict what the period will look like. And this will not require you to start breaking your head or start doing things that will not, or that will take you time. So in this two sort of field of bioinformatics, we have some relevant softwares. For instance, we have BLAST. That is basic local alignment search tool. And in this, we use it to compare DNA or protein sequence to check similarities, to check homology sequence. So if two sequence that you are getting less source are having something peculiar to themselves, you can easily use application by informatics, that is for the sequence analysis to get this, and that is where BLAST come to play. Now we have another software or package that is relevant in the um, application by informatics, that is the cluster. We use cluster also for alignment analysis. Let's say you want to conduct um, sequence alignment. We have several type of alignments. We have pairwise, we have multiple sequence alignments. So this, we have global sequence alignment. That is, we also have basic, uh, basic alignment, like the BLAST, like I've said earlier. So these packages are relevant for you to understand sequence analysis whatever sequence you are picking, either you are the one that generates this data, biological data, RNA, DNA, and lipid, or protein, or not, or you pick them from database. So you can easily use application by informatics, that is a sequence analysis to conduct that. Another software that is really relevant, that is useful, is the MEGA. MEGA, I believe many of us know what MEGA is useful. We use Omega to construct phylogenetic analysis, also use it for sequence alignment and check for evolutionary simulation to know where an organism is originating from. So you can know the source, you can know the origin of an organism using software like this in application by informatics. We have database like NCBI, we have software like R on Bioconductor where you use software to predict statistical analysis, visualize biological data. So let's say you now have a data, you already con uh, conduct the sequence alignment, you already know the function of that biological data, what is the structure. You now want to visualize, you want to see how it looks like. You can use software like R programming or Bioconductor, you can use BioPython. So this are software, we have another software called Genius. We have top art, we have coughing. So all these softwares are being used across the three level of central dogma of biomolecular biology, the RNA level, the DNA level, RNA level, and the protein level. So each of these software are developed by a computational bioinformatician, and they are being applied in biological data set, for biological information by application bioinformatics. Are you with me? So the oh, next yes, element, sir. this is a figure that yes, is sir. illustrating the computation now and the application field. Like I have here, I have the algorithm development, people that data is very well. You are going to see that we partner with different institutes. It is not just one institute that is powering NCBI. So different institutes are powering that database. So millions of people can deposit their biological data on that database. So anybody can access it at any time. So there are people that are working tirelessly to make that database functional every day. So these people are computational by informatician. And in the application, that is where we, early career scientists like us are coming to play. We use those data to carry out sequence analysis, function analysis, structural analysis. I can just sit down at the comfort of my house, 
pick biological data from people that are in India and pick people from um, for people from um, USA, pick from Pakistan, pick from China. And I can now conduct sequence alignments to check the similarities, to check the differences, to check the uh, to compare them to, to predict the structure. So you are going to see that this trend in bioinformatics is applicable to for whatever you want to do. So if you are in any field at all, you should be able to apply any of the softwares, any of the database, any of the algorithm that is being developed in the application bioinformatics. So now, importance of bioinformatics to biomedical research. We have several importance. And one of the importance of bioinformatics is in genetics and genomics. Now, while we all know that genetics just focus on exploring single gene, genomics focus on the entire data set of gene in an organism. So with genetics and genomics, if you are going to be applying bioinformatics, sorry, we are going to be able to know the genetic basic of human disease, human health. And then in this field, we are going to be able to use bioinformatics to, uh, to carry out sequencing, carry out gene expression analysis, carry out uh, genetic variation, carry out whole genome sequencing and functional genomics. So all these are relevant, applicable in the field of genetics and genomics. Now the next important application, important application of bioinformatics in the, is in the field of molecular biology. Now, molecular biology as a field focus on exploring biological proce processes at molecular level. Why is the cellular biology helps us to understand the cell, the fundamental unit of life? Our cell is what the composition or the component of the cell is. So with bioinformatics, we are able to understand the mechanisms, processes that underline how human health and disease are being carried out. So at the molecular level, we are going to know how signaling is being carried out. At the cellular malfunction or dysfunction as a result of mutation or environmental uh, influence. Yeah, and I'm going to be using bioinformatics too. And some of these tools that are using by bioinformatics for pharmacology application, for instance, is um, orthodox. We have menstrual, we have glide, we have scrodinger, we have grow marks and all that. So th these are some of the tools that are developed by computational bioinformatics and they are relevant for um,
หรือเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวนี่ตอนเป็นยังตัวนี้คงคอดเชื่อเลยนี่สุรุกุปปะดานีอ่าดิซิสรีกาเลสของโลเคชันรีกาเลสของประเทศรีกาเลสของสถานที่ที่เกี่ยวกับการท่องเที่ยวดังนั้นอินฟอร์มาติกส์ก็เป็นส่วนที่สำคัญในด้านนี้ดังนั้นอีกหนึ่งจุดคือเรื่องของโรงพยาบาลเอนจิเนียริ่งดังนั้นในนี้เราสามารถใช้ความเชื่อในประวัติศาสตร์Now, if you ask me, how b i o engineering principle come to play? Now, let's say people, uh, for instance, soldiers, they go to war and they have injuries that will lead to amputation of the limb, the hand, or any part of their body that is vital. But then, technology has been able to develop or integrate built tools, uh, built uh, software system that is going to help us. Build model of this part of the body so that these people are not going to just have their body parts lost like that. So, with bioinformatics, you can develop algorithm to design medical image, medical parts, part of the body that are being lost. So we also have this application in neuroscience. Sorry, my system is low. Now, some of the challenges of bioinformatics today we have data management. Now, as we are developing data, as we are getting data. Enormous data have been generated. So at a point, you might not be able to understand, or you might not be able to get that this data you are picking that you are using for bio, uh, bioinformatics analysis, are they having uh, are they accurate? The quality, the int uh, integrity of this uh, biological data, the computational resources, that software uh, database you are getting them from, are they reliable? Hello, I'm very sorry. My system went off. Can you all hear me, please? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay. So we Bye. have challenges, and some of the challenges, and one of the big challenges in yes, application for to biomedical research is the ethical and privacy on the factor. Now you can easily go to database like SCBI, like NA, like BBGB, and pick biological data. That you don't even know where it's coming from. So this data you are picking, there might be ethical consideration that are backing their deposit in that database. So as a bioinformatician, you don't just look. You don't look that. You just pick data from database. You don't know if there are ethical consideration that you need to put in place before you can use the data. So these are some of the challenges. And another challenge is in the uh, funding. For developing uh, computational uh, resources like those databases, for managing those data database, 
year in, year out, as people are depositing biological data in this database, you are going to discover that they are going to keep updating. So the data, biological data that are in this database in the year 1990, when you come there, and let's say in the next five years, you might not be able to access them. So data are being lost by the, as technology is being advancing. So these are some of the challenges that are being faced in the field of bioinformatics. So now the last thing I have on my slide before the system went off is the skill sets that you need to be called a bioinformatician. Now the first thing, regardless of your field of study, regardless of your discipline, you must be able to know a little about biology, a little of uh, statistics, and a little of computational science, because these are the basis of bioinformatics. Hello? Yes, sir. If uh, a person of biology, uh, life science, that is biology, biochemistry, microbiology, biotechnology, you should be able to understand biological processes, macromolecules like RNA, DNA, protein, their composition, what made them up? navigate whatever database you want to use for your bioinformatics analysis in the application bioinformatics um, aspect. So another information, another thing you need to know as a bioinformatics or to become a bioinformatician is you must be able to translate your bioinformatics analysis, your data. Because at the end of the day, if you conduct all these analysis using your software, using your system, using databases, you still need to translate them so that it will be applicable or useful for human use you get now. So let's say you are developing a drug with your system. At the end of the day, it is not the system that is going to use the drug, it is human. So you must be knowledgeable, you must have experience, skills of wet lab also in the molecular biology field, in the microbiology field, in the biotechnology field, micro biochemistry field, you should also have skill sets for wet lab. And some of the skill sets is DNA extraction. I believe many of us know how to extract DNA, different methods of DNA extraction. We must be able to conduct um, gel electrophoresis. We must be able to conduct PCR analysis. You must be able to conduct blotting analysis, either southern blotting for DNA, western blotting, all these type of blotting. You must be able to conduct expression analysis, analysis that are going to be eventually explored after you've been able to conduct or carry out your bioinformatics work using the system. So all these things are relevant for you to know as a bioinformatician. So, uh, I believe that will be all for now. So if there are questions, okay. if there are questions on what I've been talking about, you can drop them now so I can answer them. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir, for the um thank you, sir, for the teaching you going taught us already and we appreciate you thank you for the section and everything so please if you have any question if you want to drop any questions you can send it via the income messages you can read it out and you can unmute yourself and ask the questions yourself Is there no questions? Like nobody's raising up hand for questions. Or good evening. Good evening. I have a question. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. My name is Abu Yadiyah. 
He said in, in the incoming, he said, what are the things to be considered before obtaining genetic death from Okay. Thank you so much for that question, Mr. Tokwe. So before you can carry out or get genetic data from any database, what is the research you are carrying out? Let's see. I'm conducting a research that is going to require me to genetic. That is going to require me to conduct expression analysis. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need the DNA. Now, if you look at the central dogma of molecular biology, you are going to discover that at a point there is going to be RNA splicing. That is where post-translational uh, post transcriptional modification comes in. I believe you all know what I'm saying. So at this point, yeah. all the junk DNA sequence, nucleotide sequence, in that DNA is going to be removed. You get me? All this is going to be removed, going down to the protein level, forming amino acids. So there are conditions that are going to be, that are going to come into place before you can end up developing or getting your protein. But then if you want to avoid all these processes and you need your protein to know expression now, uh, the expressional analysis of that protein, you can just go down to pick your protein on the database. Like I said, these databases are not restricted to just nucleic acid alone. You can get for protein, you can get for lipid, you can get for carbohydrates and all other macromolecules on the database. So if I'm conducting an expressional analysis, like for development of drug now, let's say I want to, I know that this protein is what is causing a malfunction that is resulting to development of a disease in a human. And I want to go to a database. What is going to be relevant for me is to pick that protein information on database like PDB, that is the Protein Data Bank. Let's say I now want to conduct um, sequence similarities in the database. I'm going to go to that database, pick the amino acid sequence. I cannot pick the protein, which is in a format that has been stored, organized. I'm going to go to another database to pick the sequence itself, amino acid sequence. And some of the database that we use for that is Uniprot. So there are several databases that are relevant that you have to take note of, depending on whatever research you want to uh, carry out. And then, if you are using a peculiar database for your research, also note that their are formats, uh, and, and their are formats, yes, their are formats in which all these uh, sequences are being stored or saved. So let's say you want to conduct a uh, phylogenetic analysis now. You are now going to pick an SDF format file. You cannot use that because the file that you need is faster file. So all these things are going to be considered. And the, end, uh, the reason why you are conducting the research should also be considered before you just go online to pick uh, biological data online. So I believe that has been able to answer in start talk where question. Yes, sir. yes thank sir. you very much. Is there anyone that has a question? Mr. Richman, yourself. Okay. okay. Good evening, everyone. Okay. I'm a, I'm a baby small, a financial student at the University of Technology Accord, about technology. And um, I've always wanted to ask this question. During your presentation, you said that um, um, instead of conducting wet lab, spending more hours in the lab, you can do dry lab, which right there in your bedroom. Okay, uh, so I'll ask number one, are we getting to a time where we no need to conduct wet lab again, where we just focus on dry lab? And number two, what's the accuracy of dry lab to wet lab? Okay. Like the results, the in results. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. So if you listen very carefully, at the end of my presentation, I said, whatever skill you hold, in bioinformatics, you must be able to have skill or experience knowledge in wet lab. Are you getting me? Now, the amount of time you spend doing wet lab analysis, the resources, the money you spend, the traveling and vacation you skip to conduct wet lab analysis. 
if you are using bioinformatics tools or you are doing computational work, it is going to be limited. That time that you are going to spend, the money you will spend will be limited. And then chances of you coming up with guesses, errors in the wet lab is going to be reduced if you are able to use computational bioinformatics tools to predict. So it's like you want to go to the lab now. I want to see what you are going to do in the lab, how it will end up to be. So you can just use your bioinformatics knowledge, carry it out on your system. If you are going to have errors or issues in the lab, you are going to know from what you are doing in your bioinformatics um, process or whatever you are using your bioinformatics to, to conduct. So it's going to just serve as a guide for you so that you are going to limit all the errors, all the mistakes, all the issues you are going to encounter in the lab. So by practice, it's not completely erasing. Don't get me wrong. It's not completely erasing the face of wet lab. It is complementing it. It is also helping wet lab to be direct so that you don't parabolate up around. You don't go to this place, get this, get this, before you know what you are supposed to do. So that is why by informatics is relevant. So it cannot fade out wet lab analysis or wet lab skill. So the question that you asked, the second question, I don't get it very. Can you help me repeat that? No, I was asking about the accuracy of wet lab compared to dry lab. Okay, in life, eh, nothing is hundred percent accurate. There are also mistakes. Are you getting me? Now, yes, sir. <laughs> we are going to get mistake in the lab. Definitely, you are likely going to get a mistake using bioinformatics. But then, these softwares, this algorithm, are also developed or built or designed by humans. Are you getting me? So it's not like whatever you get in the using bioinformatics tools is going to be hundred percent replicable in the lab. But then, to some extent, it is going to reduce error you are going to get. All those time you are going to uh, spend doing trial by error in the lab, mixing one chemical, mixing that. You are going to know those definite things you are supposed to mix together. Those definite things, those particular things you are supposed to do in the lab with bioinformatics, it will help you know directly what you are supposed to do. So that is why I believe bioinformatics is not 100% accurate, but it is going to help you limit or reduce the errors you are going to use in the uh, wet lab. Now, I want to bring your attention to something. How many of us have used chat, uh, chat GPT before? Yeah, I, yeah, I've used chat GPT. Okay. Okay. Was... That uh, database, we are going sorry, to use the notification, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you can see that the developers will know that it is not going to be 100% accurate. So, you cannot tell me that bioinformatics is going to give you, but to some extent, to some extent, and then another thing is, if you look at it, let's say you want to conduct phylogenetic analysis. There are de several software you can use to conduct it. So the algorithm is at which they used to build Mega is going to be different from the algorithm they used to build Mr. Bayer. So those algorithms are completely different. So the results you are going to be getting with this software for this analysis, if you are doing it for the same and uh, doing the same analysis using another software, it might be different. You get me? So it's not always 100% accurate, too. But then there's going to be what closeness in the results. So, bioinformatics is not taking the place of wet lab analysis, and wet lab is not completely taking the uh, place of bioinformatics. But then you must be able to integrate these two so that you are going to reduce the time you are going to use, the money you are going to spend, and all those efforts you are going to spend doing wet lab without getting results so you can reduce all that using bioinformatics so thank you okay so if someone okay, has a, a question okay. i believe that's the last question for the okay okay the okay. question says what it shows that competition how then do we bridge the gap between okay. computational and lab. Now, if you look at the trend of technology these days, as new technology is being unfolded, eh, 
there are updates in the software. Now, if you go and look at Mega, for instance, Mega, I think Mega was developed in the 1990s, the first Mega software. Now, every year, or every two, three, or three years, or five years, they are going to update it. Are you all with me? Yes, sir. So, you believe, yes, sir. You yes, sir. believe that the reason for them updating it is for them to integrate new, new methods new new technologies that are being developed these days so let's say you are now conducting an analysis with the software of 1990 you know the algorithm they use those period is going to be different from what they are using these days so the data or the information and the results or the results you are going to be getting using those softwares that are being old might not be able to translate to what is happening in today's world so that is why you are going to see that these softwares are also being updated yearly. Even databases, they are updating them yearly. They are updating them yearly. So those kind of situations, if you have done a bioinformatics analysis using softwares that are giving failures or resulting to failures in the lab, you cannot business say that it is that bioinformatics because you already know what you are going to get using bioinformatics um, analysis, computational analysis, before you go to the lab. So if you're going to conduct um, computational analysis or bioinformatics analysis in the lab, please and please, that is why I said there is need for you to have um, collaboration. There is need for you to interact with people from other field. Let's say you are conducting an analysis in your lab and you're having collaborators. These people also can also conduct the same analysis so that you people can compare your results. So you are going to know oh, what I'm doing here. This person is also doing this there using another software. Is our data or our results tallying? Are we getting the same results? So you, are, you can repeat analysis like that over time before you eventually go to um, the lab. And if you discover, you are going to discover that before um, a, a process is being adopted for wet lab, Mm -hmm. You have to undergo different uh, screening method. Let's say you want to use animal model, you are going to use rats. Let's say you want to use insect model, you can use Rosophila. Let's say you want to use plant model, you can use, like, you are going to use different model because at the end of the day, it is going to be applied for human use. So you are going to use different model. You cannot just do bioinformatics and pick your results, go and start applying it in human. So there are different failures that are going to come. At the end so as you are doing this you are going to be tweaking your data you are going to be modifying all those data changes the software you are using so over time it can take you let's say so if i used to use wet lab alone you can use 20 years but then with bioinformatics integrated with wet lab you can just spend five years and technology is still advancing to the ai is advancing so the time it will take us to do all this analysis so we don't have errors in future might be reduced so everything is developing softwares have been updated so you cannot come without errors also in bioinformatics um, that um, analysis or processes that you've conducted so i believe this is able to answer your question uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. okay Okay, I can see a question here in your science. In your science, let's say, for instance, there are some neurogenerative disease like Alzheimer, for instance, and these diseases are they are they are peculiar to people that have um, it's a disease that is peculiar to people with brain disease. Let me say brain disease. So now you want to develop a drug now. Mm -hmm. You want to develop a drug. And you know that this drug eh, is having blood-brain barrier eh, limitation. But then, because you want to just use wet lab, you are now going to start testing it on rats. You test this drug, test that drug, test this drug, test that drug. At the end of the day, it will affect kidney of the rat. It will cause kidney failure, affect the liver, affect the rat's life. The rat will die. But then with computational or bioinformatics too, you can easily predict if that drug is having a blood-brain barrier. Uh, it can evade the blood-brain barrier. That is the barrier at which it's going to enter the brain. Because that is where the neurodegenerative disease of Azimia is being occurring. So if it can cross that barrier, 
you can easily use bioinformatics to know this. So that is what I mean by the application of neuroscience. So it's not limited to neuroscience. It's also applicable in diverse fields like epidemiology, I may mention of genetics, I may mention of um, um, pharmacology and therapeutics. So that is what I mean by neuroscience. So diseases that are related to neurology, neurons, you can use bioinformatics to study them. So that is is that is that. Any other question? I think someone is raising their hand. Um, no, 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 I'm good. All right, I, I think we are coming to the end of this session. So we really appreciate our speaker for this event. Thank you very much for this wonderful presentation. Uh, I think the host, that the host is no longer here, probably due to network. So uh, I would like everybody to go to the in call message and appreciate our speaker. Yeah, I just appreciate him, appreciate him because he has really given us knowledge this night. And I'm sure of us will benefit from it one way or the other. So let us appreciate our speaker. Thank you, sir. And also you can connect with our speaker on LinkedIn. He's very, very active on LinkedIn. Don't search for Christopher Ol okay. yes. Just search for the name of LinkedIn. Christopher they can connect okay. with you. Okay. Oh, sorry about that, sir. And if you have research you feel you want me to put my insights help you with i'm always open my inbox is open you can reach me through reach now so, okay and i have a i have a um short film short book i'm going to put in my very soon i'm going to also send that for each one so you can learn some software how to uh, use them and connect them back so i can send that for each one when i'm I'm done with that, so I can go back. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Very, really grateful, sir. So, um, remember that Psycode is a science club dedicated to promoting science education among, or among secondary school and tertiary institution students. So, watch out for coming webinars. So I'm going to be coming up next month. So anticipate, be ready to be part of it. And also, FIFU is organizing a secondary school outreach, and we are calling for volunteers. So let us, in case you wish to be part of the volunteers, kindly reach out to any of the admins on our general group, our WhatsApp group. So we will guide you to let you know what you are supposed to do. Uh, right, I think that is all for tonight. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Manuel, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. He gave it to me. Fred, I'll just stop. He just did disturb me for a group. I don't want to join. I really love this session. Thank you very much. Yeah. And good talk, man. Okay.